We're the Vinyl Verdict. I'm Jacob. I'm Michael. We both watched the, the Let It Be remaster on Disney Plus, directed by Michael Lindsley Hogg. A lot of the music's by the Beatles. Uh, released in 1970. We can't go into all of the details that are out there. People have been analyzing this for 55 years, but it brings a little bit of a new perspective to watch the whole thing with this kind of quality behind it. And it's the Let It Be film that everybody knows that's seen Let It Be, but I would say it's a brighter look to it and, and just very clear and very precise with seeing everything from shaving cuts to anything, you know, very clear view of the goings on in uh, Twickingham and then Apple Studios in that month of January of 69. And there's no comparison between the quality of the film and uh, especially after seeing the Get Back Peter Jackson film, I, I mean this this was, uh, I think with a Peter Jackson film you're getting a backstage view that you could never get from the film the way it was originally shot and there's no real story, it's the Beatles and that was good enough for us and it's, it's still good enough. So I would say the impressions are very cleaned up, very good looking, the music uh, sound was superb, there still remains to me, uh, although it doesn't seem as sad now all these years later, I know at the time other than get back and rocking back and forth in the theater when they were doing that, there was a kind of mystification and maybe a, some slight melancholy to it. It was a dark, dark film uh, visually. The status of the Beatles as a band, I think, was kind of up in, we, no one knew for sure how long they're going to go on or if they were going on. There was kind of in the air at that time. I will say it, it feels like we've mined this month of the Beatles catalog as much as possible. We've heard the Nagra tapes first, 120 hours of that, the 10 plus hours of the Peter Jackson documentary, and now we've come full circle back to the original, almost a highlight reel of what happened in those sessions. But it is kind of weird to watch it now because it's completely out of chronological order. The editing is really tight, especially in the first 20 minutes. I was kind of shocked by how quickly camera angles were changing and we were kind of getting, you know, 30 second bits of songs and even within those 30 seconds kind of cutting them up. Yeah, the, the sound quality, I mean, it is a pretty sh big shock when they go on the rooftop at the end. It goes into surround sound and you just get like the full band performance. There also aren't that many cases. What I noticed watching it now is how tight a lot of the camera shots are of just one member of the Beatles, even when there's four or more of them in a room, sometimes there's 10 people and they're talking about something. It's really zoomed in, like right on their face. And so it's pretty cool when you get into the, I guess two of us in the Long and Winding Road, Let It Be, that, that performance in the rooftop, when you do zoom out and you get a view of the entire band interacting and playing live. Um, most of the shots are more close-ups before that. It's so clear, you catch a couple things you didn't catch originally. I was saying, I, I, I heard like George Martin singing a little bit of the orchestration for um, Octopus's Garden. I couldn't see his lips moving on prior versions, so it was uh, interesting to make that out. And then uh, like on Kansas City, they're all singing a little bit and you, maybe you don't hear it even, but you can see it visually. And so that's kind of cool. I know they were intentionally using different camera angles than the Peter Jackson um, doc. It's still impressive to me to see them, you know, you always hear about it, the Beatles' last live performance. And you think, well, it wasn't exactly a big uh, actual con. Well, it seems to be pretty much a concert in, a, in an abbreviated way. And they were ready for it. Paul was ready for it. And I think they were all, they all got in the spirit of it. and. Uh, it's impressive to see. It's never not been impressive, uh, but this was this was beautifully done as far as the sound and the visual go. You know, it's a little bit uh, higher quality along with Deja Vu because we have seen it before, not exactly like this, but there's that element of seen it more than once before now, and uh, so the story's been told, and it's it's still for a Beatle fan. It's 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 great to see this, and it requires a lot of context though, and that's why I'm shocked. Now that it's on Disney Plus, it's going to be interesting for the new audience get into the fact that. We have to record an album or we're going to perform this in some way. It just kind of happens and, and you're just watching random songs being performed with very little dialogue until about halfway through. I guess there's that, that intro for the first five minutes, Peter Jackson and Michael Lindsay Hogg uh, do that little interview and that's probably filmed in the last year for that reason, to give a little context because otherwise I don't know what I'm watching. But you raise a real good point. Uh, there's no real narrative of any kind and, 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 and we watched it years ago without one and that was good enough. Now after seeing the Peter Jackson film and seeing all of the tension and the resolution of it and how, what it took to get up to that rooftop and what they went through before it, that's a deeper view for a fan, you know, that's a real fan, it's going to be impressive. This is impressive minus all of that. It's still okay but you see, I guess we've been a little spoiled in a sense by by seeing all that, by being the fly on the wall kind of, which you know we always dreamed about, and uh, now you were a little bit with the Peter Jackson film, and now you're back to being uh, 
one of the great, you know, mass of Beatle fans. We, we've seen a lot of uh, unofficial releases over the years that were of questionable quality, so it's nice, at least for a completionist, to have a version of this thing that something akin to the quality of other Beatle releases. This thing was neglected for, for a long time. Uh, glad that it's finally official. We can throw out our uh, our old unofficial DVDs. And you really thought you were seeing them up close when you saw that. That's what's so funny. Uh, again, the Peter Jackson just turned everything upside down. You see nothing.